Uh, so seed saving, as both of us, I think, have been emphasizing, is a way to protect and preserve cultural and biological diversity. Um, it's, and I love the seed in my hand there. It's one of my favorite seeds. That's the fingerprint fava from Peru. And it's really beautiful. And this, I actually chose this because this seed has a memory of home. It's grown, whoa, <laughs> jumped up there on the, the volume. But um, it's grown pri um, mostly equatorial regions. Um, this, this particular strain is from Peru. And when you grow it up here this far north, it has, it loses its fingerprints. But if you take that seed, it's what I've been told, obviously I haven't gone back, but if you took the seed that I grew, and they still have like faint swirls, but not, not that clear fingerprint effect, mm -hmm. which is so cool. I have some samples here you can look at. Um, but if you take them and grow them back by the equator, they still are genetically remember that fingerprint, and the fingerprints return mm -hmm. as they go home again. Wow. So I thought that's pretty cool. Um, so this is, you know, I think both Owen and I um, are definitely in agreement on the seed rematriation and reconciliation. I've been spending the last year studying with a Mohawk woman, Rowan White, and highly recommend her, um, she does an online course. It's a Seed Siva seasonal mentorship program. If any of you are really, really interested in saving seeds, I highly recommend her course. It's about a 10 month, um, you know, program online. You can study at your own pace, which I love because in growing season, I'm like, ah, homework, like, mm, yeah, not <laughs> happening. But now in the winter, I'm having time to catch up. My name is Michelle Vicking. I'm from Green Acres Farms in Tom, Connecticut. I am, um, Rowan White will be in, in Connecticut in June if you'd like to meet her in person. I'm also in a three-day conference called Where Women Gather. I'm just putting my plug out there. Awesome. Go see Rowan. She's an amazing speaker. Um, yeah, so I've been, you know, I've had the, yeah, follow her on Instagram. She's a powerful writer. Yeah, yeah she's the best. She's definitely got the best thing going out there. Um, but anyway, her program, her, her online course is amazing. Highly recommend it. And this is one, one of the main themes throughout is, um, you know, the seed rematriation and reconciliation. Right. You know, the, the work cross-culturally to care for these seeds and restore trust and develop collaborative <coughs> relationships. One of the opportunities that I've had um, is through one of Rowan's mentors was a, a, a Mohawk man, Stephen McCumber, and the really, just speaking of rematriation, um, it was kind of a chance thing. I told Nathan Kleinman that I wanted, I needed some sort of focus, because you know, I get stuff from all over the world, but I also, at some point, can be overwhelmed. And it's nice to have like a focus and a theme if you become like a serious seed collector. So I said, you know, upstate, look for things upstate New York, you know, heritage. And uh, one of the things he sent me was a corn called Katie Wheeler. And it's a calico flint corn. Um, he just randomly assigned it to me to grow out um, to replenish some stocks that the USDA had. So I did and sent it back, but I put it on my Facebook page. And I kind of use that as, you know, mostly networking, you know, farm networking, gardening info and stuff. And uh, Stephen McCumber, who, um, the Mohawk man, contacted me and he said, I'm the man who originally co collected that strain from Katie Wheeler, who is still alive in her 90s in the uh, Cataraugus um, a nursing home on the Cataraugus reservation. And he had lost his seed stock years ago and although he'd shared it out, it had fallen out of favor, nobody was growing it that he knew of. And he figured it was lost. And here I am, not native, <laughs> just randomly happened to have a sample of that that I grew out successfully. So he tagged which, which ears of corn, you know, and he asked, could I please have it back? And I was able to return it to, you know, the person who collected it. And I just was like, you know, so honored that I could do that. And it formed a relationship with Stephen, um, you know, caring for and collaborating on more seed grow outs and stuff. So, yeah. Similar Stephen McCumber story, I met him through Rowan as well when I grew out a variety he named um, called uh, Seneca Blue Bear Dance. And I wanted to mention it um, to add to the story that, you know, similar to the importance of having many people growing out the varieties, part of the, that importance is the genetic diversity. Um, in this case, you were able just to have it still alive. Um, and he hadn't lost the Seneca Blue Bear Dance. I just happened to be growing it also. 
and um, we were able to do a three-way trade with Rowan and Stephen and my grow out because when you're growing in small plots for seed saving, you kind of the genetics start to you know inbreed a little bit, and so to be able to then reconnect with people who are growing similar rare varieties that are important and and swap, you know, we each sent each other 100, 200 seeds um, to combine and then grow out, that means you have a much wider gene pool um, and there's there's a big benefit to that as well. And if you're the one person growing this this nearly extinct thing, um, it'd be great to find friends, regardless of whether you're Mohawk or not, um, to help you maintain the genetic diversity and vigor and strength of that population size. And as another sign of the collaborative relationships, um, People like Rowan and uh, Stephen, et cetera, um, Mary Arquette, they formed the Indigenous Seakeepers Network. I just want to give a shout out to them. And they're working with the Hudson Valley um, Farm Hub. And uh, Ken Green from Hudson Valley Seed Library, who is the founder of the Seed Libraries, as you guys have one that's you know, the direct result of Ken's work. And so they have formed the um, a what's the name of the farm? Um, blanking, but um, and basically it's a project to rematri. It's a seed shed um, has a longer name, but online seed shed will get you there if you search it. Um, but anyway, they are Ken is now specializing in working with um, the Aquasasini specifically to rematriate some of the seeds. They Ken and his crew and associated people with Hudson Valley are growing them out and uh, the Mohawk people are coming down and helping with the harvest. They help with the planting periodically. Because um, up in the Aquasasini Reservation, it's not the greatest land that they have to grow, so this is some better ground. And uh, so they're restoring. So you know, it's a good example of collaborative relationships that can develop through seed keeping. And uh, rematriation, reconciliation, um, you know, because you know, basically Ken's growing on land that was taken from the natives. And um, so it's a way of healing those, those cycles and helping restore relationships and working as allies. Uh, another similar um, point is just how, so I'm thinking, okay, how can you take this concept and, and use it? Um, and one great thing for me has been able to reconnect with friends, a couple of whom are in the room, um, to be able to send seeds that are in my collection that are about to expire, because seeds have a shelf life. Um, and so Beth and Joe, and even my mom has, has helped as well, um, in their gardens, be able to send them, oh, my Mary Reynolds tomato is 10 years old, I need, I need to grow it ASAP, or oh, the blue Shakamax and bean is about to expire, maybe it's already dead, can you try to revive it? Um, and that's been helpful. I mean, we're gonna get more into the technical part, but, um, I wouldn't let this stop you. I think it's important to just save seeds no matter what. But for me, because I'm stewarding really rare, important varieties, I like to make sure they don't cross-pollinate with other varieties. And so that's why I'm always looking for trusted friends and family to um, grow out like the blue shakamaxin, you know, 30 feet, 40, 50 feet from any other bean of the same species. Um, and so that's something that is that could be done in a community, um, stewarding important varieties to your community. You know, we don't all have to be seed savers if we're gardeners, but it, it helps um, to take on some of those important varieties for the community. Um, I think we'll get into it more, but part of um, what would be really cool about a specific community doing it versus me sending it all over the country is that you're keeping those genetics adapted to your place. Um, and so that way if, if you know people network in here and say, I'm, I'm in charge of the, you know, Connecticut field pumpkin, then your your genetics for that seed are adapted to your uh, climate here and your soils, um, and then also to your taste. Uh, a lot of communities like a pumpkin a specific way, and so you select over time for for certain qualities. But that's jumping a little bit ahead. 